Welcome to my weekly market roundup, 17th May 2020. I am Sagar I used to work in information technology, mostly based in Singapore. I have retired now. I am living in Thailand, swing trading stocks using Q trading systems and techniques that I develop. You may watch this and other trading videos on my YouTube channel, Trading Profitably and contact me using my email id tradingprofitably at gmail.com I regularly share live stock and market analysis on my traders forum sagarnandi.com and also on my twitter page sagarnandi All these resources are open to the public and you are most welcome to make use of them Disclaimer, this demonstration is for educational purposes only it is designed to share information on the systems and techniques that I use for trading. The information presented here should only be used by people who are aware of the risk inherent in trading. Past performance is no guarantee of future return. I am not an investment advisor. This session is not for any recommendation of buying or selling stock or any other instrument. I will have no liability for any investment decision made by the audience. As usual, I will analyze oil and gold using technical charts and after that I will demonstrate use of the Q360 degrees technique where you find trading opportunities by aligning trades with the market direction, sector industry strength, fundamental strength as well as technical strength giving you truly high probability low risk trades. What are the systems I am going to use? For technical analysis, I am going to use Q Global and Q Finder for trading opportunity identification. I may also use Q Elite. Q Elite runs on Trade Station and Q Global runs on Metastock. For fundamental and peer analysis, I will use Q Vital. And for sector industry rotation analysis, I will use Q Edge. I may or may not use Q index that I use for market or index level analysis. That was the last slide of my presentation. I will now continue with the live system. Let's begin the commodities analysis with oil futures. Today I am looking at the oil futures LCO. Looking at it using the standard weekly daily at a glance template, weekly on the left and daily on the right. In the weekly chart, LCO displayed a bullish headwind possible reversal signal three weeks ago that could catch the very bottom and since then price is going up. In the daily also there was a bullish headwind signal price recovered somewhat from there it retested the same level created a false downside breakout and now it is going up again on friday the daily flow candle color is cyan the weekly is also cyan this is giving a possible go with flow trend following long trade setup in lco Remember the bullish headwind in the weekly chart that came three weeks ago. If you remember my weekly market roundup at that time, right at that time, at the end of the week, I mentioned of the bullish headwind that came also in the oil ETF USO. And at that time, showing the bullish headwind, I had mentioned that it was a time to book profit in short positions if you had that and look for a buy setup. That was indeed useful because since then, LCO went up and if I switch to USO, 
this is USO now after displaying the bullish headwind USO also went up looking at the USO and LCO it seems that the likely move of oil from here is upward however if you look at the other oil future symbol CL and this is CL now you can see that CL is nearing a memory resistance in the weekly chart and also in the daily chart looking at that I may be cautious about taking a new long position in oil if you are already holding a long position you may continue to hold that you may book partial profit and hold on to partial position with trailing stop to protect the profit you have gold ETF GLD the weekly backdrop color is bullish and the daily is also bullish in color it is going up in daily chart after moving in a narrow sidewise range when was the optimal time to buy it you see this memory support line trend line support automatically drawn on this day price came precisely to the memory support and went up from there if you kept an eye on the daily memory support you could switch to the intraday fine tune chart template and take a long position in gold right near the low of that day using Q fine tune real time chart either 5 minute or 10 minute interval after that price has gone up you could place stop just below the memory support the stop was never hit by this Friday you have covered more than the risk distance you could book at least partial profit the weekly is looking pretty bullish there may not be any reason to book full position profit you might book partial profit and hold on to partial position will I buy now no I will not buy now I tend to buy at the optimal price point which was as I explained on this day when price came to the memory support what may be the next optimal buy point if price can break out of this watermark resistance then pull back and go up again that will keep the next go with flow trend following long trade setup if I am not already in gold I will wait for such a setup from the commodities analysis now let's switch to sector level analysis this is one month sector performance showing performance of the 11 sectors across one month period 10 day period and 5 day period over one month shown by the blue bars 8 sectors were up and 3 were down energy was the best performer by far over one month it is up by 24 percent over 10 days the sector performance deteriorated only two sectors are up now and nine are down over five days it deteriorated further no sector went up all the sectors went down five day performance is shown by the red bars the sectors all went down by significant percentages energy also declined this sector level graph is showing a bearish picture over the weekly period let's now look closer this is a sector performance comparing the performance over 5 day period 2 day period and then 0 day period that is Friday's performance though over five day period all sectors were down over two day period that is Thursday Friday nine were up 
only two were down and on Friday itself eight sectors were up and three were down. What can we deduce from these graphs? We can see that though over five day period the sectors are weak on the last two days of week Thursday and Friday the sectors recovered. The sectors showed recovery on Thursday and Friday. Is that visible at the market level? This is S&P 500 ETF SPY using the standard weekly daily at a glance template. Here in the daily chart we can see on Thursday price tried to go down but recovered nicely. Friday it went up slightly. The traffic light candle color turned green. However, price is moving in a narrow range in the daily chart and the weekly candle is indecisive. That is not allowing me to take any long trade in SPY and based on SPY my market view is neutral. Is that different from the other ETFs? Let's find out. Now I am looking at Nasdaq ETF QQQ. Here also price recovered nicely on Thursday and Friday. If you are following me on YouTube channel, you know that looking at the price recovery of QQQ from the memory support line. Not only on Thursday, Friday, but on Wednesday itself. I started to book profit in my short positions and consider taking long trades. Did I take long trades? Not really. Why? Because SPY was showing indecision in the weekly chart and QQQ is showing even more indecision in the weekly chart. Though QQQ is still going up in an uptrend in the daily chart, it is having higher low and higher high. The weekly chart is showing a doji candle. That is very indecisive and that is not the time I would like to buy stocks. On Friday, I conducted one YouTube live session. In that I mentioned that if Friday price could move substantially, then I would look to take new positions either in the long or short direction depending on how the price moved. Did price move much on Friday? No. On Friday, relative to Thursday's close, price didn't move much. Therefore, I didn't take many new trades on Friday. And this indecision is shown not only in SPY and QQQ, it is visible in DIA and IWM as well. Let's look at them. Dow Jones Industrial Average ETF DIA. Here also the daily is moving inside a narrow range and the weekly candle shape is indecisive. Russell 2000 ETF IWM Thursday and Friday price recovered. However, this is the weakest of the four market ETFs. This is the only ETF where the traffic light candle color in the daily chart is remaining red, bearish. Weekly is again indecisive. Time to make a call on my market outlook and prefer trade direction. Because all the market ETFs are indecisive in the weekly chart, my market outlook is neutral. What is my preferred trade direction? This week it is unknown. This week I don't know whether I will trade in the long direction or short direction when the Monday market opens. Rather, I will see what is happening using the real-time market breadth information, fine-tuned charts, etc. 
and then decide my trading direction to make it aligned with how the market is moving right now I don't know whether those trades will be on the long side or the short side this is my traders forum sagarnandi.com here I regularly share live stock analysis under the category Sagarnandi's trade ideas and some other Q traders are also sharing very nice stock picks under the category Q traders stock pick on Friday I didn't share any stock analysis why because since then itself my market outlook was neutral and preferred trade direction was unknown when that is the case I don't like to take many new trades and neither do I share them on my traders forum however I did look at one stock and shared it on my Twitter page the Twitter handle is Sagarnandi the stock was BC let's look at what I shared I shared it just after the market close on Friday what did I observe in the weekly price was nicely going up this week's backdrop candle color and shape both are bullish relative performance is showing it is solidly outperforming the market in the daily price is going up in an uptrend and on Friday it displayed a bullish flow color candle that is cyan color candle in the daily chart meeting all the requirements of a possible go with flow trend following long setup only concern might be that price is already close to the upper boundary level however you may also notice that price was moving inside a narrow range if you are willing to take a trade when price is breaking out of that range then you might consider taking a long position in BC I also attached its cube vital fundamental scorecard on Friday it was up by more than 10 percent undervalued stock with a short squeeze potential and accelerating earnings growth earlier earnings growth was minus 16 percent and in the latest quarter earnings growth turned positive not to a large number but still relative to the previous quarter's result this is a significant improvement in Q technique we are allowed to take a long position in a stock that is either undervalued or having robust earnings growth here for sure the valuation is good undervalued stock shown by the cyan color therefore the fundamental allows us to take a long trade technicals were already looking good and I also shared the industry strength from QH real-time sector industry scorecard the industry was strong on Friday one of the strongest industries the laser products industry how did I find it let me show that this is Q edge it has the inside tab inside tab shows the best performing and worst performing stocks under various categories the two categories that I use most are the best performing growth stocks and best performing undervalued stocks BC came in the category of best performing undervalued stock this is from where I found it and I also saw there was another stock Vista Outdoors in the list same list best performing undervalued stocks that also belong to the same 
Deja Products industry. I looked at both of them. BC looked like a stronger stock to me. That's why I shared it. What you could also do is not just stop there, not just stop by looking at the stocks that are coming in queue inside, but you could carry out a fundamental and peer analysis. Let me do that. You may put your cursor anywhere on the stock of your interest, Brunswick in this case, and click the peer analysis icon. It's going to find all the PR stocks of BC which is now used as a root stock. It will find the PR stocks first and then it will carry out a fundamental and peer analysis. It has found all the PR stocks and it has filled up the fundamental scorecard of this stock. Let me look at the PR stocks. There are several stocks I am interested in looking at the stocks that went up on Friday. I am clicking the zero day column. Zero day means real time updated column. That is Friday's data now. Double clicking on any column header sorts by that column. I am going to highlight all the stocks that went up by at least 2% and clicking the chart icon. That will open all the charts on Metastock Q Global. You could also transfer the symbols to TradeStation if you are using Q Elite. For now, I have set my technical trading system to Q Global. Therefore, when I click the chart icon, it is going to open all the charts in Q Global. Once the charts are open, I am going to press Control Tab to go through them. The first stock that I see here is Winnebago. This is also a strong stock, nicely going up in an orderly fashion in an uptrend with higher high, higher low. If you are following Dr. Jeffrey's videos, he mentioned about Winnebago in the last weekly video that he shared. Let's go through all the stocks. Next stock is Peloton. It is above the upper boundary now. For me, it is a bit extended. If you look back, when the cyan flow color candle came, that gave a go with flow long trade setup. That would be my optimal buy point. Personally, I wouldn't buy now. If I bought at that point, I would put stop just below the memory support and I would book partial profit at the upper boundary and continue to hold partial position with trailing stock. I will not buy it now. This is Vista Outdoors. This is the other stock that appeared in Q Insight in the list of best performing undervalued stocks. This is bouncing nicely from the memory support line. If you were keeping an eye on this stock, you could buy it on Thursday. That would be the optimal buy point and you would put stop just below the memory support. I wouldn't buy now. It is already up by one day. In my technique, I try to buy it at the optimal buy point, which was on Thursday at the market close, not on Friday. On Friday, it was already a day too late. Next stock is Malibu Boats. It's a boat company probably manufactures and sales boats. This is also looking strong. In an uptrend with higher high, higher low and it displayed a bullish flow candle on Friday that is giving a possible go flow trend following long trade setup similar to BC. By the way, BC is also in the boating industry. It makes and sells boats. And this stock, MBEU, is also in the same industry. This is also strong and this is above the upper boundary level. Not that someone may not buy it, but I prefer to buy it when price is not already above upper boundary. MCFT. This one is also looking strong. 
it displayed the bullish headwind at the very bottom once again the headwind signal could catch the very bottom could point to the turn around of the stock now it is going up it has memory support on friday it has a cyan flow color candle this is also looking strong looking very similar to bc and back to bc if you look at mcft and then look at bc bc is little bit stronger than mcft because now it has gained both the yellow as well as the white direction lines whereas if i go back to mcft it has regained the yellow direction line but somewhat below the white direction line from that perspective bc is stronger but both of them are in the boating industry let's look at their fundamentals once more this is cube vital i am going to focus on only the two stocks bc and mcft i clicked on their symbols and click on the caesar icon that will clear the remaining stocks and if you now look at them side by side in terms of valuation both are strong both are undervalued if you look at earnings growth bc already has positive earnings growth and improving whereas mcft has negative and reducing earnings growth if you look at dividend bc pays a dividend of 1.9 percentage mcft doesn't have any dividend when you look at the scorecard in this manner fundamentally bc is stronger and technically also i showed bc has regained both yellow and white direction line bc is stronger than mcft now you have carried out the complete workflow complete key workflow and have found a fundamentally strong stock bc in a strong industry that is going up if you at all bought a stock this could be a stock to buy that is all i plan to share in today's session i will not look at more stocks today on monday after the market opens i will try to decide my preferred trade direction based on where the market is going and based on that i may share new trading ideas on my traders forum and also on the twitter page thank you once again for attending to the session i look forward to seeing you in my next session have a great week and trade profitably